Welcome, and it is my really distinct honor to have with us the Cousteau family, joining us for World Oceans Day 2020. So kind of you to take time and all three of you to tune into our events. And uh, I'm particularly uh, happy to have you, not because uh, I grew up uh, listening to all of you and I am uh, working on oceans because of you, I say it very openly, but also because this is a moment where we're really in time sort of pausing and reflecting. And it is tremendously important for us, I think, to look back across time and to see what we have learned and not forget it and not forget what has motivated us to be what we are today. And there is no other family in the world I could think of besides the Cousteaus who in this moment of pause could really take us back in time and remind us of how each generation saw the ocean and humanity's relation to the ocean and what it meant to them and how they felt the need and the motivation to dive into the deep to discover and advance humanity. So with that, I am really pleased to have uh, Jean-Michel Cousteau, Céline Cousteau and Fabien Cousteau. And I'll give uh, the floor to Jean-Michel Cousteau to start us off. Thank you. Well, Thank you very much. It's an honor for me to be part of the celebration of World Ocean Day. Uh, obviously, uh, thanks to my dad, uh, who co-invented the regulator, the material that we allowed us to go diving. I was a kid at the time, and I had this immense privilege uh, to go diving when I was seven, and I've never stopped. I will continue. And uh, that is because at that time, we could hear him say to all the time to us, people protect what they love. And uh, we have a huge opportunity. And as a family, and I'm honored myself, not only to have inherited uh, some of what he and his team did, but also to pass on some of that to my children who are in their own way specialized in what they want to do and their priority to protect what we all depend upon. I created, after my father passed away, Ocean Future Society. I wanted to honor his philosophy and uh, it is a membership which uh, people can go and check us out whenever they want. And uh, our mission is very, very simple protect the ocean, and you protect yourself. So for me, it would be a, a great honor to uh, be able to honor the World Ocean Day and uh, to be able to talk about uh, everything that you mentioned earlier when you made your presentation or introduction. Each uh, family not only can contribute, but each generation becomes innovators, explorers, and communicators. And that's something I'm finding out more and more and more, thanks to what I call the communication revolution, where you have uh, almost 9 billion people connected to each other on an ongoing basis. And then uh, we all are focusing on the importance of science for sustainability. And uh, I think that's something that uh, Fabian and Celine are totally into and can continue and will never stop passing it on to the next generation. So perhaps Celine, you want to share some of your extraordinary work that you've done uh, since we took you in the middle of the Amazon on board Calypso, and you were a little kid then, and I took Fabien up on top of Mount Miss Me uh, so we could see uh, the source or one of the many sources of the Amazon, which is the biggest uh, water system mm -hmm. on the planet, which covers about uh, the same surface as the United States of America, and uh, some of that fresh water we can follow it, and we did it with scientists all the way to uh, not only the Atlantic Ocean, but all the way to England. So, <laughs> uh, Celine, 
if you want to share with us your wonderful experience. Go ahead. <laughs> Merci, Papa. Um, well, I think it's, um, you know, especially for our family, the ocean was always a part of our lives. It wasn't something that was forced upon us. It was just always present. And I think it's important to acknowledge that that's a privilege. It's a privilege to understand that the ocean is there, that the ocean is a part of us, um, that it's our responsibility to protect the ocean. And that's something that I feel being part of this family, I've inherited almost in a passive way, not because it was forced upon us, but because it was a constant. It's like a family member um, who's always there. And so the, the real um, privilege in essence is to be able to grow up with that knowledge that the ocean is important and essential and central to our well-being. But the responsibility then is to pass it on. And we're here two generations representing, I think, three and maybe four generations. I have an eight-year-old son um, of, of a family who understands the importance not just to fall in love with the ocean, but to protect it. So what I've chosen to do with what I've grown up with um, is expanded out of the oceans. And my father was just talking about the Amazon. It's a place that I hold near and dear to my heart. But one of the reasons it's important is not just because I'm passionate about it, but because what happens there, it has impact everywhere on the planet and vice versa with the oceans. So being able to go out on expeditions, um, whether filming documentaries, um, doing exploration, helping scientists is really about bringing information and data back. It's about bringing stories back and inspiring all generations to become part of this same story. So the method for me changes quite a bit. Um, I work in documentary films like my brother Fabien and my father um, and our grandfather did because it's really a, a very effective method to bringing stories to people's homes and hopefully inspiring them to be connected to the ocean ecosystem and to care. But we have to explain what the ocean is about. We have to make the connections and the threads. So I don't only work on documentary films, but I also create um, designs for sculptures and jewelry so that people who see those pieces, maybe they take that piece of the story with them as well. And they understand, oh, this is designed based on coral. Well, what is coral? Why is it important? So I think with that, it's really important for us to continue the work that, um, that Gik started, that my father has continued, that Fabien and I have picked up as well, but really broaden it outside of just the oceans into other ecosystems, but also different methods. And, and for us to be able to do that, we have to move beyond just getting people to fall in love with the oceans and be inspired by them, but for them to become an ally to the ocean and understand how they can take tangible action to move things forward. Because it's no longer enough to care we have to move forward to something that is gonna create real change. So inspire, fall in love, and then do something about it. We are living in a generation now, my father loves to say the communication revolution, where we can share all of this information with people around the world, give them the tools with which they can then move forward and do something and speak their language. The audience that we address isn't always the same, and they may not have the same worries or cares. So if they care about their food system, talk about the traceability of seafood. If they care about the health, talk about ocean pollution. If they care about economy, point to tourism. If the ocean's not healthy, tourists aren't coming. So at all levels, we're able to have this conversation about why it's important for us to care for the oceans and take tangible action. I really feel that the the legacy that we directly inherited from Zik isn't one that we own. It's a legacy we share with anybody who has been inspired by him or anyone who defends oceans and takes it forward to doing something positive. So I feel like we have a, a much greater family than just the Cousteaus because everywhere around the world, people say, wow, I was inspired by your grandfather. He inspired me to do this, become a marine biologist or clean up the beaches. Um, and I think that's what a legacy is about. So I'm, I'm proud to share that with many people around the world. 
And I have Fabien. <laughs> I love seeing the three of us. This is almost like a family reunion. We've been, um, at, like everybody, we've been um, away from each other. So um, first, I, I mean, I want to thank the opportunity to bring the three of us together. Um, Fabien has... He has the technology, he has the curiosity, he, he pushes boundaries um, in ways not a lot of people do. And I think between the three of us, we form a good balance and he has incredible stories to share. So I will now hand it over to my big brother. <laughs> merci Céline, merci Papa, uh, merci Nations Unies and uh, merci all of you. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a, an absolute blessing, of course, to be uh, the three of us on a common platform. It's very difficult to wrangle us uh, to do that uh, it, just because we're scattered throughout the four winds with our projects. And, you know, in today's world, uh, I love being in person, in front of an audience, sharing ideas, having conversations. And unfortunately, in today's world, especially right now with the pandemic uh, kind of modifying our outreach, uh, it does give us the opportunity to use a platform such as this to bring in a, a larger audience to have that kind of symbiotic discussion. And the ocean, uh, as with these kinds of platforms, is the great unifier. It is representative uh, to connecting us all, just like these little infernal devices we have in our everyday lives uh, connects us all, globally speaking. The ocean is our great unifier. It is our life support system. And as you've probably heard in the recent past, people have been saying every bre other breath that you take is due to the ocean. P virtually everything that we all depend on in life depends on a healthy ocean, no healthy ocean, no healthy people, no ocean, no future, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All this to say that without a common bond and a common unity into the future, not only of ocean exploration, because this is still a final frontier on the planet, we've explored less than 5% of our ocean world to date, and as such, it brings a lot of opportunities but within the, that context of going and forging forward into the future of ocean exploration and the future of forging new technologies to be able to do that, we have to be very careful not to repeat the mistakes of the past that we have on land and in the dawn of ocean exploration. And as Celine and my father have uh, so eloquently put, we're standing on the shoulders of pioneers, of giants that have given us the, uh, the, the baseline from which to continue on. A few years ago, I had the, uh, the honor of leading a team down to the last undersea remaining laboratory called Aquarius. Aquarius as of this year is about 30 years old, so it's certainly not a new technology, but it was one and it is one that's very unique. Back in the early 1960s, uh, some of the Calypso crew and my grandfather and grandmother uh, were the pioneers in opening up a new platform of ocean exploration through underwater habitats and laboratories. And that really gives us kind of a platform to uh, add to the quiver of technologies we have today, including ships and submersibles and ROVs and uh, probes and so on and so forth to offer uh, a, a platform that's akin to the International Space Station underwater. And when we look to exploring our final frontier on this planet, and also one that's absolutely beautiful and unique in our galaxy, as far as we know, that houses the vast majority of life that we've, that we've ever discovered, much less that we are dependent on, we must look forward to building a new International Space Station, this time underwater. Because as we forge ahead to bring back all that valuable data to fight pandemics like COVID-19 and such, to be able to bring back that biochem that's so crucial to finding those solutions, as we go forward and look at new ways to extract resources in a balanced and sustainable way with an eye towards the long-term goal, 
as we look forward to finding a balance with nature so that we stop eating away what's left of the capital and we start looking at using the interest that it bears in a way that is much, much more long-term sustainable. We must find these solutions today and implement them not only on a local level, but on a global level. And the only way we can do that is to bring in the general public who all of us are dependent on for making better decisions so that we can find a long-term traje trajectory that benefits us all. Because at the end of the day, if we're to look at a way to be able to live in symbiotic relationship for our trajectory as a species, we must also find that solution that encompasses the entire web of life that is our life support system. And that is going right back to protecting our ocean world, our little oasis in space. And as such, if we care, whether we care about the ocean or not, we are beholden to its health for everything that we depend on. And that includes the economic well-being of us as individuals, as local communities, and of course, as nations and a global community. And at the end of the day, this is our natural resource bank account and we can't afford to go broke. So uh, whether it's building new habitats such as uh, Proteus, which is one of our big projects at the Ocean Learning Center, you can check that out if you like over at our website, or if it's some other trajectory that each one of us has in our personal lives, our everyday decisions absolutely fundamentally make a, a, an impact in the greater scheme of things. And as such, this platform, the United Nations World Ocean Day and others that celebrate our ocean are fundamentally important to bring us all in a common unison. And as such, I am just very proud to be and honored to be part of this platform and to be with my family and look forward to future generations joining in to this common good and this common direction. So thank you very much. And I'm gonna pass it back over to my father. Well, thank you very much, Fabian. Thank you, Celine. I think you did a great job as usual. <laughs> I'm so happy. You know, I remember when uh, <laughs> we kept saying, uh, how can you protect what you don't understand? Well, that's what you're helping with a lot. And uh, that is, in my view, absolutely critical. And today uh, we have new technology which will allow us to explore deeper and longer in the ocean, which we all depend upon. And the public needs, everyone needs to keep in mind that uh, every time you drink a glass of water, you're drinking the ocean. And the quality of that water is... Uh, critical for the quality of our lives. Yeah. So there's a lot to explore, discover. It's an exciting time and World Ocean Day uh, should inspire a lot of people. We're dealing with uh, issues which have to do with uh, climate change and uh, that has to do with a lot of mistakes that we've made. We didn't know, now we do. But we have new ideas and new op opportunities to make sure that I can look at my grandchild <laughs> and say, hey, Felix, I want you to have the same privilege that I've had when I was your age. He's 10 years old, he's gonna be 10 years old. And uh, uh, I think that will happen. And I want all the kids on the planet to experience that. At the same time, climate change is an issue and I have a little one minute show to share with you. Could we have it? And thank you very much. Well, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you. And just, just before we roll the video, let me thank all three of you, of course, for, for joining us and your kind words and support. And I think your, your message is really strong and clear and, and the simplicity of it is what's striking. Is, you know, we've really moved from inspiring to falling in love to acting. And uh, the acting part is what uh, we look uh, for now in the young generations. And we really uh, count on you to keep supporting that vision and keep contributing and pushing. So thank you very much, Sepustos. Merci. <laughs>
Un grand plaisir, thank you. Merci François, merci à tout le monde. <rire> Climate change is the greatest challenge in human history. Our collective future depends on a healthy environment. We have the solutions of innovative clean energy. We now need the willingness to put them into action. We owe it to ourselves. We owe it to our water planet. Every day is the perfect opportunity to create a sustainable future. We are the only species on the planet that has the opportunity and the privilege not to disappear. Well, we have a program. Uh, and we have several programs, but one of them we uh, have created not long ago, which uh, connect particularly with young people. And uh, we make them wet, we make them feel, we make them learn, they enjoy it, and they, they have a lot of fun. And uh, it's called Ambassador of the Environment. It's in different parts of the world, in different hotels, and uh, we're reaching out thousands of people that way and sometimes the parents they want to be part of the program and they join uh, with their children so we have to make the program a little more simple and easier because the parents are much slower than their children to absorb information and they are the best one when they go home to teach or share with their parents. So there is huge opportunities that uh, we can continue to provide uh, to uh, the, the general public and to young people in particular, who are the decision makers that will be making much better decisions than I was making when I was a kid, definitely. I don't know about Fabien. Oh, yeah, you made the statement. Oh, I think you made the <laughs> We're, we're making pretty good ones now, I think. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I, you know, I think the, one of the most valuable things is the family community. Uh, and, and thanks to uh, Sinine and I's parents and their parents, our grandparents, we are who we are. And uh, it's formed our, our, tra our trajectory and, and our way of thinking. Mm -hmm. And to be able to join together and have some of these activities is very important. Uh, CEOs and presidents have children too, and we all want for them, our progeny, our, our future, uh, to be able to inherit what we've taken for granted. And so those things are extraordinarily important. And to, for us to make better decisions, we need to arm uh, our, our kids with the right information in the right uh, way and impassion them to understand that we must live with this planet rather than on it. Absolutely. The if, if I can just add a just a, a small note, you know, the a lot of people don't have access to the oceans, but I think if they just take a moment with water in general, um, it's a it's something that really connects us all. Um, if you do have access to the oceans then to put a mask on and look at what's underneath and just spend a quiet moment. You don't have to get all complicated like we do with all of our gear and get underwater, but there's a real communion that happens when, when we are near or in water. Um, and as my dad says, you know, when you're drinking a glass of water, you're drinking the ocean. So don't assume that you're far away from the ocean, therefore you're not connected to it. You can always find a waterway. Well, if you like breathing, Every other breath you take is thanks to the ocean. If, as Papa said uh, in the past, if you're skiing on top of a mountain, you're skiing on the ocean. Everything <laughs> is connected because of the ocean. I, I'm sure. I'm sure Papa is very happy to know that we've been listening the whole time. <laughs> 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 <Mind me. laughs> it took a while, but they came around. Huh? <laughs> well, we made a show with kids that are throwing. Uh, bowls of uh, snow or whatever to each other 
and then we teaching that you know you're throwing ocean at each other <laughs> and they that's love it they love that that's great well thank you so much again to the three of you for everything that you do and for taking the time to join us for world oceans day and uh, we're really delighted that uh, you're part of this community and we really look forward to continuing to amplify the importance of the oceans and humanity and how every day, every action, each individual takes really matters. Thank you again. Merci. Thank you. Un grand plaisir. Merci. Merci, François. Merci à vous tous. And happy World Oceans Day. Yeah. Have, happy World Ocean Day. Au revoir.